Your Massachusetts real estate market update for October 24th, 2022. So in this video, as always, we're going to talk about single family as well as condo market. What's going on last week in these markets in Massachusetts? Little spoiler alert, a little steady eddy, which is a really great thing for the markets. We're going to talk about interest rates and how the rates are higher than they should be. Yes, they went up a little bit last week, but when you look at the spreads, interest rates are a lot higher than they should be. So we're going to talk about why, and I can guarantee you it's not the reason that you're thinking. We're also going to take a look at some national headlines, and I'm going to kind of give you my thoughts as to what the, what's going on there. And then we're going to take a look at an expensive condo in the Back Bay. I mean, this place is really awesome and pretty gorgeous, and I'm pretty sure it was in the movie Bride Wars. But... Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent that sold more than a thousand homes and am one of Massachusetts' top real estate agents. So let's jump into that single family data. In the single family market, we have 5,595 units that are currently on the market. When we look at the gap from this, this time this year compared to this time last year, we currently have 1,134 more single family units on the market. Ding, 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 buyer opportunity, right? There's more inventory for buyers to choose from, which really is a fantastic thing. When we move into new listings, we currently have 981 single family homes that were currently listed last week. Now, the average amount of new listings in the state of Massachusetts has been 1,087 for both August and September. So yes, we were a little below this number, about 10% below to be exact. You know, something that we'll definitely continue to keep our eyes on. But if our sales are falling and our inventory is falling as well, that is actually, believe it or not, a good thing. So moving over to under agreements, we had 954 homes go under agreement in the state of Massachusetts last week. Now the four week rolling average was 1,011 units. So this is about 6% below that average that we saw then but yeah the under agreements went down six percent below average but new listings went down ten percent below average so again this is the stability that we're looking for in the market we'd be more concerned if it was kind of more like this if you will where one was a lot higher than the other and there were 671 single family homes that sold last week this was 21 percent below our four week rolling average of uh, 853 units so definitely something we really want to keep our eye on but we kind of knew that this was happening based off of the under agreement numbers that we saw back in September. The average sale price last week for a single family home in Massachusetts was $687,000 versus the median sales price of $580,000. And that months of inventory, months of inventory is how we gauge what type of market we're in. Zero to five months is considered a seller's market, five to seven equal market, seven months or more is that buyer's market. So we did continue to see the months of inventory number creep up in for single families in the state of Massachusetts. Last Last week, we had a month of inventory number of 1.49 months, and this is compared to last week's 1.44 months. Now, I've said it once, and I've said it again, and I'm going to continue to say it. I really believe that this metric is a lagging indicator where it takes the last four months data and to come up with this metric. When you when you shorten it to two months, it, it shows more realistic of what this market is. It's it's softer than that one point, um, essentially five months worth of inventory would have you believe. Heading over to the condo market, we currently have 2,854 condos on the market here in the state of Massachusetts. Now, when we take a look at 28 days ago and compare the amount of inventory on the market then to today, and we can do it from last week as well, we're finding that the condo market has also really started to stabilize from an inventory level where we've had about 25 to 3% increases compared to our 28-day uh, prior count. So this is, again, a really great thing for our markets. We had 436 newly listed condos that came on the market in the state of Massachusetts. Now the average uh, for August as well as September was 457 units. So yes, this is about 5% off of our average, but again, that's okay. We had 362 condos go under agreement in the state of Massachusetts last week. When we look at the average for both August and September, that number was 399. So yes, we were about 9% off of our average under agreement mark here. We had 272 condos closed in the state of Massachusetts. Again, our average was 296 for the last uh, four week rolling average. So we're a little below average there. The average sale price for a condo was $645,000. Meanwhile, that median sales price was $509,500. And then that months of inventory, the months of inventory, just like in the single family market, it did increase. Uh, currently we have uh, 2.23 months worth of inventory on the market for condos. And this is compared to last week's 2.15. But if instead of that four months that it was calculated on, and if I adjust 
adjusted it to just two months worth of data, we'd actually have a months of inventory number of 4.61 months, which again, I really believe is a better indication of our market where we stand today. That essentially is saying that we're, we're in the tail end of a seller's market getting ready to shift into that equal market, which is really the market that we see today when we list a property and buyer activity. Again, we've seen some great stability in both the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts for the last couple of weeks. This is really, really, really great news, of course, unless not so great news if you're one of those people that are hoping the market's going to crack by 30 or 40 percent. But for everybody else, this is really fantastic news as a market. Stability is exactly what we want. When you have instability, that's when people start deciding maybe not to make the decision to buy or sell a house. And that's where you see huge swings in the market. So again, this is really great news. And if you're enjoying this market data specifically for Massachusetts, then make sure you smash that like button and hit that subscribe button because I do this every single week. I give you an update as to what is going on in specifically our market. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so that way we can keep this coming at you. So moving on to the mortgage market. Interest rates, they've seemed to stabilize. Yes, they're in the sevens. They go up and then they go down. But again, we're seeing the stability in the interest rate market, which is a great thing for our real estate market compared to in September. I mean, they were up and down, left and right. I mean, just those huge swings, I can't say it enough, is not good for the market. Now, here's what's crazy is interest rates, they are high. They're at, they're at 7%. And they're not high from a historical perspective. Where they're high is actually that interest rates are normally about 100 to 125 basis points over the 10-year treasury. But currently, we're about 250 basis points over that 10-year treasury sp spread for mortgage rates for us as home buyers. So most people are going to jump to, well, yeah, duh, the Fed keeps on increasing their interest rates. But that's actually not the reason as to why. And what's really important here, it's, it's actually a sign as to what things are going to come um, and a little bit more proof as to what things are going to come. But believe it or not, the reason why interest rates are so high today from that historical average where it's normally 100 to 125 basis points, so almost double what it is traditionally, the reason why is because it is expected that interest rates are going to go down sooner rather than later and institutional buyers are not buying these residential mortgage-backed securities. So what is a residential mortgage-backed security? Think of it where we take a thousand home loans that have been originated, a bank takes those, packages them together, and then sells that package to the open market through bonds. That's essentially a residential mortgage-backed security. Investors are not out there to buy these residential mortgage-backed securities. The liquidity in this market where you have investors buying these things has pretty much dried up. And the reason why is because they are aware that if interest rates go down significantly, the people that buy today, well, they're just going to refinance. And that's the last thing these guys want because when they're investing their money and they're, and they're doing their models, calculating their yields, things of this nature, right? They need a predictable yield. They need a predictable model. And right now there is no predictability in this market because there's no stability in the market, right? And so therefore we have a lot less investors that are buying these bonds in this market, which means that these banks have to charge us a higher interest rate in order to lure these investors in to buy these bonds so that way the bank can ultimately get that capital back and then go originate a new loan so it's kind of crazy the reason why interest rates today are higher than they should be is because it's expected that interest rates are going to start going down sometime relatively like april-ish to mid 2023. Um, so that's why, you know, the refinance boom that they are expecting that is going to happen. Well, that, that's ultimately what's making your interest rates more expensive today. So on to those article headlines. Inventory of homes, $10 million and up grows as top end real estate market pulls back. Hey, look, this one was completely expected. Eventually it was going to happen. You have the stock market down 20, 30, 40%. I mean, you have people just getting hammered in the stock market. Who holds a lot of money in the stock market? Well, it's probably people that are buying luxury houses. On top of it, the economy is starting to slope. This one makes sense. Yeah, this, this, the, the writing was on the wall for this to happen, especially because the whole market as a whole has started to slow down. So if the whole market's slowing down, well, then this smaller top tier of luxury is eventually going to start slowing down because 
because of that trickle effect. So on to the next headline. Some companies are closing their doors. Others are shutting down divisions. Look, lenders going out of business was kind of obvious. I mean, we are, our amount of mortgages being written is way, way, way down. And we're going to talk about that in a couple seconds. And a little pillow talk, if you will. Um, the word on the street is a top 10 lender in the country actually just missed a debt payment. So that's not really great signs for that company in particular. And a pretty crazy analysis came out that says and believes that 60% of all loan officers that are currently in the business today won't be in the business by the end of next year. I mean, pretty crazy the transition that we're seeing that's going on in the mortgage market. So on to the next article, mortgage delinquency rate decreased in September. Hmm. For all of you guys out there that think that home prices are just going to crash because of an impending foreclosure crisis, tell me how this calculates it in. Okay, so let's just take that foreclosure crisis, and that's ultimately going to be what sinks our market. Let's just take that you know, argument, if you will, and we can shelve it for another month based off of that data. So application volume plunges to 25-year low. Now, first of all, a large part of this can be contributed to just the complete disappearance of refinances. Like nobody is looking to refinance their house right now. That market has completely disappeared. So that that decreased banking activity quite a bit. And the other one is obviously that interest rates have gone up and the market has started to slow. We've gone back down to the 2014 levels in regards to sales that we're seeing. Well, all of these banks were geared up for 2021 volume. So it makes sense that they're going to have to start laying people off as this mortgage volume really finds some stability, finds that new level. You're going to see a bunch of banks close because of this. Um, again, I'm going to shoot back to the stat that 60% of all mortgage lenders, like mortgage brokers, are expected to be out of the business by the end of next year. I mean, that that's just an astounding stat. Then check out this article, mortgage rates expected to fall to 5.4% by late 2023. Again, a little pillow talk here, but a CEO of a major bank was on the phone last week talking about how they are expecting, in their models, they are expecting interest rates to be in the low fives to high fours, possibly high fours, next year. So ultimately what's going to happen is the economy is going to slow down and then the Fed's going to stop increasing interest rates and we're going to see some stability in the marketplace and the government's going to try to stimulate the economy and we're going to start seeing interest rates go down in order to stimulate our real estate market because housing is 15 to 18 percent of our total GDP in the United States. Housing is is important. If you want to bring back the U.S. economy, you bring back housing and it will do it for you just in and of itself. So the economy, what the Fed's going to do, they're going to lower interest rates. It's going to, they're going to stimulate the, the bond markets through buying those residential mortgage-backed securities that I was talking about earlier, which will bring down lower interest rate, bring down and lower interest rates, which means you're going to start seeing more and more buyers to the market which ultimately means right now could be an absolutely amazing time to buy a house. Really right now and ultimately probably until March-ish is a big, big window of opportunity before we start really seeing those interest rates go down in order to lure more buyers to the marketplace. So let's take a look at that luxury condo in the Back Bay in Boston. Now the property is located at 150 Beacon Street in the Back Bay. It's unit number one. The condo is a three bedroom and three and a half bath unit that spans 4,698 square feet. It's located between Berkeley and Clarendon. And this home has soaring 14 foot ceilings and large rooms throughout the whole entire house, including an open designer kitchen that looks onto a grand landscape deck. I mean, holy moly, that deck was huge. Uh, it's pretty much considered or a farm in Boston. Uh, there's a magnificent architectural detail throughout the whole entire property and some stunning woodwork that you just quite frankly don't see in newer construction. Um, and also this home comes with two assigned parking space. The asking price for this property is 13.995 million. Let's just call it 14 million uh, to you know five grand when you're buying a 14 million dollar house. Doesn't really matter all that much. But you wanna talk about real estate, you wanna talk about your own specific goals, then I would love to chat with you I love talking about real estate. This is my passion. I love what I do. I love 
talking to folks just like you and, and hearing what are the goals that you're looking to accomplish. Uh, just a quick heads up, I, I don't work with everyone. Um, I can only work with so many people. So if you are thinking about buying or selling, then, then let me know so that way I can, you know, we can kind of get the conversation going and, and ultimately make sure that um, you know, I have availability to work with you. Um, you know, just if I'm working with too many people, I, I can't continue to offer the the true customer service and that I that I want to provide to everybody. That's my reasoning why. Should you have any questions or comments about any of this data in this video, then I would love to hear you. Throw them in the con comment section below. Uh, you can also find my contact information in the section below. Uh, but otherwise, keep in mind that an informed person is a powerful person. So until next week.